welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. And my name is Parks. Guys, you may notice there is not a will next to me. What? Weird, Where? right? If there's a will, there's a way. But oh, there's... that was so bad. Uh, Parks, I told you to be the funny one. Um, okay, so guys, you may notice, obviously, Will is not here. Unfortunately, he has had a slam-packed week and has not been able to record, and so... Parks very kindly said that he would fill in for Will, and so he's joining us today for this podcast episode. Parks, welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. I think this is the first like podcast episode, um, is that correct, that you've been a part of? I know we recorded one, but I don't know if we actually used it or not. Did we not use that one? It was like post-cube or something. Yeah, it was. I think we didn't end up using it because we ended up having to make so many cuts out yes. of it or something like that. Something like that. You know, it was one of those after hours. Yeah, thing. it was like literally three in the morning last time yeah. we did that, so <laughs> this time it's not quite so late. Indeed. Uh, So we're hoping to have a good episode today. We've got a lot of information for you and a lot of very important news about It Resolves. So uh, first of all, if you're not already, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, One of the more important ones is Patreon. Uh, We do have our very first and our newest patron. We're really excited about it. Chris Montgomery. Thank you so much, my friend. He has been hanging out with us on YouTube, on live streams and things like that. So we're very happy to see him here uh, and showing his support. That's with a K. It is. K-R-I-S. He is the man. Go hang out with Chris. He is awesome. Uh, Thank you very much for your support, Chris. We really do appreciate it. And we do have cards coming your way very soon, just so you know. Uh, That's part of his pledge tier that he went for. So You also get that kiss free of charge. Exactly. There's another. That wouldn't happen if Will was here. It's, it's so, true. You know, he's you know, not as loving as I am. That's true. That's very true, sadly. Um, <laughs> also, uh, this past Monday, we did have our winner for the Ixalan Bundle giveaway. MTG Doom on Instagram won it. Ooh. Congratulations, my friend. And again, that will be out as soon as possible. We're a little bit running. We're running a little bit late on some things uh, just because Will has had such a packed week. So we will get that out as soon as possible. Mm, yes, indeed. Yeah. As soon as possible. Um, A-S-A-P. I do want to thank everybody who did participate in the giveaway because we had a lot of participation. We had almost a hundred people enter into that giveaway. Oh no, I which is fantastic. I got all the notifications. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say uh, he's been posting a lot on our Instagram lately, which is awesome. By the way, I appreciate that because I normally I'm the only one that does rounds so that I could post more. But you know, you can do uh, rivals I, cubes. How interesting is rivals? No, what rivals drafts? It's yeah, rivals is interesting. I would, the other night um, I was with my friend Casey and he okay. and I did a um, draft league on MTGO yeah, with yeah. rivals. We did two different ones. Uh, they were they were nice. Um, <laughs> they w- weren't great. Both of them we went two one or something. Yeah. Um, so I mean we did good, but we you know I don't know this this set is you know it's not my favorite take or leave set. Yeah, there's a few sweet cards, but for the majority of it, I'm not a huge fan. Right. Um, to be honest, but. With all that being said, uh, to go over what we're going to be talking about today, we of course have our random card of the day. We're going to talk about Rivals of Ixalan and the cards that have impacted Commander. Mm. We're probably going to do top 5, top 10 cards. Uh, All this information that we're going to be talking about is coming from EDA Trek, so you can check this out for yourself. In addition, we of course have our question of the week, and then our brand new Crack-A-Packs of Rivals of of Ixalan. Notice that they are not pre-opened as they normally are. What? Right? Wow. Weird. Normally they're pre-opened. This time they are not. We're going to try and keep it that way from here on out. For those of you not watching and just listening, this is, you can hear that it's completely sealed. Exactly. Like, you hear that? That sounds sealed. That crinkling? That's completely It's a good sealed. sound, to be honest. It sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful sound. All right. So, let's get into it with our random card of the day in three, two, one. SWAT. What child? That is a classic card from Onslaught. It is a common, an instant for one and two black. Destroy target creature with power two or less, and you can also cycle it by paying two. Oh, look at that. Phage the untouchable right there. Yes. Man across the face. I love it. Thanks. This is also reprinted in Urza's Legacy. That's interesting. Um, thoughts on this card, Parks? Uh, thoughts on this card. I mean, I like that it is the, you know, uh, it is a limited playable card. I, first oh, yeah. First of all, that's what first comes to my mind as I am a limited player. Yeah. Uh, instant speed removal is great. Uh, power two or less is not, you know, 
not insanely good, but yeah. you know, it hits a lot of cards. And I, I'm not familiar with this, you know, limited playable, like this set. This but, environment, yeah. Um, so I don't know exactly what cards it hits. Um, um, to be honest, I'm not sure either. I do know a little bit about Onslaught, but it's been so long since I've played with any of the cards that gotcha. I wouldn't be able to say for sure. However... What's great about a card like this is cycling is your out. Oh, I mean, you always sure. have yeah. an upside, right? Like right. it doesn't matter. This would be playable in a black deck, even if there are no targets in the opponent's deck. You can cycle it, and it's fine. The um, way I so think I about like it. it is, you know, cards that have uh, you're able to draw a card for two mana. Yep, it is good. Yeah, because two mana to draw a card is kind of like the universal. Yeah, kind of for magic, you know, that's kind of like the average how much you'll be paying to draw a card. Yeah. Uh, so if you can pay one to draw a card, you know, those are really good really cards. good. <laughs> you know. That's, yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. I definitely agree. It's definitely a very limited removal spell, and that it's creatures with power two or less. So that's constricting. Uh, it's very good against low power, low ground decks, that kind of thing. However. Because you have that out of cycling, you can really run it main deck in anything in a limited environment, and it's great. Um, I would say in constructed, not really viable at all. Yeah, it's just not very good. Maybe um, in popper or penny. Uh, maybe in popper. Uh, it is legal in popper, so theoretically it could be seen there. Although I think there would probably be better options like <laughs> Chainer's Edict and yeah. things like that. So <laughs> yeah, this is um, a limited card, if anything. Yes, definitely a limited card. But happy to see something from Onslaught. That's kind of nice because we don't normally get and, Onslaught. I mean, and that art is just great. The art with Phage, pretty yeah. sweet. I dig she it. Just, wow. She just, I can't say B word, B word slapped that guy. Mm. Can't say that. It's family friendly. <laughs> you know, like, Phage the Untouchable could be her rat name, too. Like, hey, you Your know, rat name? Oh, name. okay. You know, that was what the SWAT was, you know? <laughs> hey, I'm Phage the Untouchable. Oh. Are you going to rap for a second here, uh, Parks? I was about to. Is this going to be I your debut? <laughs> didn't think of anything that rhymed with untouchable, I panicked. <laughs> All right, guys, let's jump right into uh, Rivals of Ixalan with Commander. Um, obviously, this set has been fantastic for Commander. Uh, there have been a lot of really good actual Commanders to come out of this set, uh, Zakam being probably the, the biggest, I would say. Let's see. Actually, no. Tyrant of Oras Arazka. I mean, I saw that Merfolk card. Uh, yeah, that's that it's deck really is, good. That's standard. It's so, yeah, the it's standard deck is and, like, it's real really good. good. Um, but Zakama is up there as one of the top, uh, of course, and then Azur, and then so on and so forth. So. Um, a lot of good commanders, but we're going to be talking about just in general the best cards that have come out of this for commander. Uh, and the, what we're taking on into account here is playability. How how often is this played? And so we're going to be going in descending order. So first, we have the primal hunger, Galtra. Galta. 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 That one. Uh, this is a 12, 12, 4, 12, 10, and 2 green legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur. Uh, it costs X less to cast, where X is the total powers power of creatures you control. It also has Trample. This card is fantastic. We talked about it in our set review. You're going to be able to play this, especially in Commander, for next to nothing. This card is insane. It's so good. This card is really It's really good. Um, it's super, super efficient because, again, you're going to be able to cast this for way, way less than 12. Uh, as we see with another card on this list, it's sort of a combo card with certain things that you can get it down very low very quickly. Uh, but, I mean, not enough good things, I think, can be said about this. I just think it's insane. I think it's just, like, do you think this would ever be, like, a commander, you know, because, like... A commander? Yes. Yeah, I definitely think because, so. Because, like, the fact that it gets X less, so that even subtracts from it the does. extra that... It absolutely does. And, in fact, uh, it is the fourth ah, most popular fourth commander most. out of uh, Rivals of Ixalan, so I think you're definitely right. I think you get the most playability so as a commander, because, yeah. you know, otherwise, I mean, it's great... But, but to then have again, it's just a creature with trample. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. I agree. It's like you could play this super, super cheap as your commander almost always. Yeah. But you're still kind of just getting a twelve, twelve beater. And like, if you're playing your commander, you want to do something awesome, 
Not that a 12 12 with trample right. isn't awesome, but it's very straightforward. I you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, <clears throat> excuse me, this sees a lot of play in Commander, and I think we will continue to see it yes. in a lot of Commander decks, but maybe not quite so often as the actual Commander yes. themselves. I just, I personally, I, I think it's a good, great, great yeah, yeah. card. Great card. I know it's going to see the play. Oh, yeah. I personally, I'm just saying. Are you going to build this commander? No, I'm, no I'm, saying, <laughs> I'm just saying personally, like, yeah. I'm not a big fan because okay, it's okay. just a 12 12. It is. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is. Because in commander, I want to do crazy shenanigans stuff. I'm not there. You and I, Parks, are very similar, though. It, that we want to do some crazy do combo, some crazy something stuff. like that. This is a will attack. card. This is a will card if attack. there ever was one. Um, all right, so awesome card. Definitely the top played out of the Rivals cards. There we go. The second one. Etali Primal Storm, mm -hmm. uh, the 6-6 six, six legendary guy. creature, Elder Dinosaur, for 6 when it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. This you could abuse. This drastically is so good. this is amazing <laughs> granted you could always hit duds but still like but the thing what? is if you abuse it there are definitely cards out there aggravated assault right let's get a few extra combat phases Absolutely. why not right play free cards I mean, that just seems awesome i mean even if you don't want to have the extra combat phases yeah it, i mean you can still you're like taking away their cards, their exile yeah. for good, even if they're lands. That's know? true. And even if they're not lands, you get good stuff. So yeah. that's cool. There's I really like really this a card. Side to this card. I think equipping this in Commander, this happens all the time. Equipping it with Lightning Greaves makes it that much better. Like <laughs> that would be is just a good card. It I, is just a good card. Any creature <laughs> you want to equip Lightning Greaves. I think this card. is like the best target out of potentially all of the rivals' cards to Greaves up turn the turn you play it would you agree uh, out of these cards out of these yeah yeah this one maybe yeah, yeah uh, like, we'll get uh, there in a second <laughs> i don't know i think i'd rather steal stuff though oh yeah that's true you know what i mean pretty fun uh definitely a sweet card sees playing up to 69 decks right now so moving on to the third card polyraptor it is a five five four eight six and two green uh, with the enraged mechanic and when it's dealt damage create a token that's a copy of polyraptor this card is super abusable mm -hmm. in Commander. Enrage is just a really, I think, a really cool mechanic. It is. I like the the flavor of it, if that makes sense. I like that, you know, in Commander, I find um, there's a lot of cards that just like do pinging and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. And now, um, you know, it gives them, even if your <laughs> opponent doesn't have stuff, you yeah. have creatures that you can ping. It's kind of okay and to do it's that. it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, I really like this card. I think it's definitely something that you could, like, impact tremors. Is that a combo? Can you ping impact this? Tremors. Every time a creature Rangers, comes into play. It, deals damage to a it might just player. be to a player. I'm going to look it up. Oh, oh god! It's red and a uh, red and a colorless. Yes. About. Yeah, yeah, each opponent. Dang, that would be so sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be really cool. An enraged deck. Yeah. We'll call it PMS. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Oh, Park, it's good to have you on the show, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, just a really good card. You can definitely abuse this, uh, as you mentioned, with pingers, things like that. So super, super good. Uh, the next card, which might be the better Greaves target, Primal Dawn, uh, Zetalpa? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Zetalpa. 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 So Italian. Uh, it is a 4-8 for 8. It has Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. Mm. Seems pretty good. <laughs> uh, this suffers from the same issue that I think with the Primal Hunger. Is that it's just a giant thing, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I think it's better than the Primal Hunter because. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah. Pri Primal Hunger. Sorry, because you know, <laughs> it definitely does more things. It's yeah easier to get over. Mm -hmm. Double strike. I mean, with if you're playing, you we're talking about EDH here. So yeah, know, EDH. A lot of people play swords, you know. So double strike in itself, double sword triggers. Ooh. That's a good point. That's definitely a good point. I do think this is probably stronger. Uh, what I don't like about it is that it's a four eight. That just feels weird to me. 
<laughs> I think it's funny, but <laughs> that's cool. I think it's it needs to be a four eight, but seeing four and eight next to each other just feels really weird to me. Right, I don't yeah, know. You don't see many four. You eights do not there. see that normally. Uh, so, but it's definitely a strong card. All those keywords make it amazing. Intrigue. I would say so. And giving it uh, haste and trout. Yeah, you know, with greaves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we can just agree that greaves on any of these. Are greaves fun. on any of these yeah, really makes them good. good. Um. The next card, which I think is an interesting include, this card is one that I really like, Wayward Swordtooth. It is a 5-5 five, five, for 3, which sounds amazing. However, it has Ascend, uh, and it can only attack or block if you already have the City's Blessing, but you do get to play an additional additional land Excuse me, on each of your turns. I love this card. I think it's really good. It's a... It's a... It's, it's good... It's good. <laughs> limited, yes. Uh, and limited, in EDH, yeah. there are better cards. I, the three drop yes. slot. Yeah. Um, that do the same, but... But they're not dinosaurs. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Yeah. We gotta We're go try We're talking about this. At, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, then yes, it's, it's a good no, card. It's just a sweet card. Like... I think this combos really well with Primal Hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it's five power, so it's dropping the mana cost down by five on turn three mm -hmm. by itself, which is sweet. You also get to ramp out additional lands, which is going to help you hit that City's Blessing Ascend trigger. So you're going to get there hopefully a little bit faster than the opponent if you have something like this out. Um, and in Commander, you're going to get the City's Blessing at some point anyway. Most uh, because it's Commander. like <laughs> It's kind of what you do. So... I really like this, uh, but I definitely think really only in tandem with Primal Hunger. I think it's a cool card, an interesting card, but I think you're probably right. There's better options at three, Yeah, but unfortunately. We're, like I said, we are talking about this. We are so. talking about in Dinosaurs and in Rivals, so I'm with that. The next card. This is a sweet card. <laughs> the Immortal Sun. It is a six casting cost legendary artifact. Players cannot activate Planeswalker's loyalty abilities. Shuts off all of them. That's so good. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Spells you cast cost one less to cast. And creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's like the catch-all of, like, yeah. no, I mean, what, anthem effects, right? It, it's like, just <laughs> a really good card. It is. I mean... It's the Immortal Sun. And, indeed. Yeah, I mean that's properly <laughs> named. It is. I agree. I think this is at its best, obviously in creature-based decks because you get the 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 buff mm -hmm. to all creatures. Uh, in addition, you get to draw into more action, which I think is perfect because a lot of you wouldn't necessarily want this in like a blue deck, right? I mean, I just personally think it's gonna find a lot of play into like artifact mm -hmm. decks. Um, and just actually, I mean, to be honest with you, I, even in non-creature based decks, spells you cost cast one less. To I cast. mean, exactly, yeah. But this is just an all-around good card. What it is an all-around good card. However, I would argue that if you are in a non-creature based deck, there are better options if you're trying to cheapen your spells. I, it's but. Players can't activate planeswalkers. I agree, but if you're not playing video. creatures, you probably are playing planeswalkers. I would think at least a couple. Oh, it's uh, all I, players. I, yes, all I, players. You, I did not. Yeah, uh, I like that you draw an additional card off of it, and I do think the spells costing one less is important. But I do think there are just better options for that. Coming of the Crescent Moon lets everybody draw an additional mm -hmm. card, Howling Mind, things like that. Mm -hmm. In addition, Baral or uh, what's the Goblin from R to R? Goblin Electromancer? Is that it? The blue and a red that lets all your spells ca cast one less? Yes, yes. I believe all the that's instants it. Instants and sorceries. Instants and sorceries, there you go. So there's just better options, I think. And it may be that you can't find all these options on a specific card. Mm hmm. Which makes sense, but they're also a lot cheaper, so you'll get to play them sooner. <laughs> um, so I like this card. I think it's great in creature decks, but I think outside of that, it's not at its best, personally. That's just my thought on it. Moving on. C, Floor, Oracle. It is a 2-3 two, for 4. 2 and 2 blue. It is a Merfolk Wizard. Uh, whenever a Merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Obviously, this is Merfolk Tribal. This is just a great 
engine, right? Mm. That's, oh, yeah. that's all it is. It's amazing. Play it in your Merfolk deck. End of story. All right, moving on. <laughs> a silver-clad Ferocidons. Uh, this is an 8-5 for 7. 5 and 2 red. In rage, whenever it is dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. This is the kind of thing I would love to abuse. Oh, yes. Sacrifice all your lands. It's all permanents. So it can hit lands, it can hit artifacts, enchantments, it hits everything, and it doesn't target them. Meaning it gets around hexproof, anything like that. It's awesome. Indestructible, style. exactly. I think it's just a sweet card, man. <laughs> this is so made for Commander. Mm-hmm. I think. I. The thing, first thing when I think when I see Enrage is Staff of Nin just feels like it's so much yes, better. Yes, I agree. Because I feel like Staff of Nin too many times, you know, in the late game, it's just sitting there pinging your opponent. But yeah. now if you have Enrage... If you have Enrage, you can actually really abuse it. What is this next one? Enrage creature. This is a good one. All right, so Trap Jaw Tyrant. 5-5-4-5. Five, five, five. 3 and 2 white. It has Enrage when it's dealt damage. Exile target creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. I mean, board wipe on a stick? Seems pretty good. You can repeat this, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you just gotta find a way to keep it from, uh, keep it alive. It's yeah. All that, but, I mean, in EDH, you know... There's an infinite so number of ways. Things. Yeah, yeah. I this card is another one that I would say abuse. That's all you need to do with it. It's so sweet. Like being able to basically board wipe them as long as you can keep this around is amazing. That's all you need to do. Um yeah, it's even honestly this is just a good standard card too, I think. I don't know much about the current standard because we've shaken things up a bit, mm-hmm. but No, I I honestly um, don't know much about standard at all right. <laughs> but I do think that this is a pretty pretty playable card. It's a pretty sweet one. Um really happy to see that. So, the last card. Last card. Merfolk, Merfolk Mist Binder. It's a 2/2 two, two for a green and a blue. And it is a Merfolk Lord. It's, it's the a, brand new Lord. It's a good one. It is a good one. It is a very good one. And now, like I said, Merfolk, like I saw the Merfolk deck. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. It's so good. Um, modern Merfolk are even are hitting these. 49 a piece? Yeah, for an uncommon. <laughs> In standard, also. I mean, yeah, modern Merfolk was already a thing before yeah. this. But. This just makes it that much better. Um here's my question we're talking outside of commander what all formats do you think this will hit just modern uh, just modern yeah okay i'm just wondering you don't think it'll hit anything outside of that i mean well edh edh yeah but i'm more eternal formats Um, okay just wondering um this is a very very powerful card though obviously it goes in every merfolk deck because it's going to be buffing everything for two which is just ideal uh, that's really all there is to it. It's a lord. You play it. It's tribal synergy. Indeed. So, do the thing. Lord. You know, Lords down to the tennis court. of Atlantis, literally. Huh? What? what? Anyway. What? Yes! So, top ten cards from Ixalan, rivals of Ixalan, excuse me, that have hit Commander. Uh, obviously, these aren't super surprising. We kind of expected all these, but... Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how these play out in the next few months. Obviously, there's a lot of hype around this set right now, so a lot of people are building dinos and things like that. Yeah, And so we're going to be seeing these cards around in EDH for a bit, but it'll be interesting after a few months to see which ones stick around, I think. Uh, Yeah. I think we can cross off a few. Uh, Yeah, I think quite a few of them we're going to be able to cross off, but... Uh, for kind of casual EDH games, I think these are great cards. Uh, kind of budget cards. You'll be seeing them as people test them yeah. to see what they do. Maybe there will be some crazy infinite combo. I hope. Out of Polyraptor, it, that's the one I think might have the craziest. Because you can just create Copy, tons of yeah. them. I don't know, but I think that might be a thing. Um, anyway, yeah, so guys... Moving on to our question of the week. So this past week, we asked you all, due to the banning of uh, Energy and Ramanup Ruins, excuse me, what will be the next big standard deck? And a couple of you mentioned that Energy really isn't completely nerfed, that we'll still see a little bit of it. I'm a little less certain of that. I think Attune with Aether was a really big hit because it made it so consistent for them. 
Um, but I do think there's enough support that it could still be a viable deck, so we'll see what happens. Obviously, Merfolk was on the list. A lot of you guys thought Merfolk. I, no surprise there. No. Merfolk is insane. <laughs> so I think I definitely agree with that one. Jeskai Control also showed up. Uh, Grixis Control also showed up as well, as well as Grixis Pirates. So two different takes on the Grixis deck. What do you think about Grixis Pirates? Grixis Pirates is looking really good. Um, I mean, it's definitely an aggro deck there for yeah. you. Um, uh, just, I don't know. <laughs> Merfolk and Pirates are two like decks. I mean, to be honest, it's making me not want to go into standard. <laughs> um, Why is that? I'm just not a big fan of going against just completely aggro decks. Which Being the combo it, control it, player, it, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like to, I like a control standard, a yeah. control mid range standard. I like that too. I'm kind of with that. This one is everyone's attacking Ixalan. You know they're fighting over this island. You know they're trying to, which I will say is a flavor win. It is. No, it technically this, this works. Is very flavorful. It is very, very flavorful. flavorful. Um, like. Yeah, it's a super well... Zetalpa! Zetalpa! <laughs> Zetalpa. <laughs> Inside jokes happening already. Um, another deck people are saying will stick around is the Approach decks, obviously. Um, no surprise there, we're going to keep seeing those. Uh, I mean, well, when you can just play a card that says when you win the game. Yeah, exactly, you're going to try and make that work. So, <laughs> no surprise there. But we do want to ask for this upcoming week, guys. What is your favorite rival card for Commander? So, obviously, we just went through the top ten list... There's a lot of great commanders out there in this set. But what are your favorites? What cards are you most excited to play in commander decks? Okay, your you. My answer What's yours? Right yeah. now, Island. That is my favorite card from Rivals of Ixalan. Moving on. Uh, I told you to be funny. <laughs> uh, Alright, last segment, guys. We have our... Rivals of Ixalan, crack a pack. Obviously, we need to set new goal cards. We're not going to do that quite yet uh, because Will is not here. So we'll just see what we get. Yeah, but we will say I what we're hoping matter. to open. He mm. doesn't. He literally doesn't. I don't matter. <laughs> From now on, they're just going to, you know, just Photoshop a, like, just me right here in the back. Just, just doing this? This. <laughs> Even though I don't matter. That'll be the thumbnail just us doing that. Um, what are you hoping to pull? Uh, what am I hoping to pull? Uh, well, obviously, I would like to see these new walkers. Um, yeah. Just because I Quadly like... looks sweet. I just like the fact that there's new walkers. I'm tired <laughs> of the same old, same old five. Jace, we're looking at you. <laughs> Jace. Jace. Oh. <laughs> All right. How do you usually... So, normally, we just kind of go through and talk about what would be our first pick out of the packs. Ooh, that's a good one. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Dang, there's a... A lot of really good cards in this one. Uh, my rare is Bishop of Binding, by the way, which probably is the pick because that's just super good. Uh, mine is Arch of Orazka. <laughs> not the pick. <laughs> uh, I mean, for you, it's not the pick. Is it uh, your pick? Is I that mean, what you would pick? Draw a card. It goes in every single day. Oh, it's amazing. I'm the guy so who good. will snap so pick good. artifacts over any card first pack because <laughs> it does not lock. I am the guy who does not t like to be locked down, you know? Yeah. I like to explore my options. Uh, by the way, I'm seeing what hit me up. Yeah, what's up? No. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, but no, um, here oh. I'm definitely taking the Legion Lieutenant. Oh my gosh, yes. Dude, these two cards together would be amazing. Uh, I also have, uh, hold up, I have an Impale. I have... I've been Impaled. Yeah, Moment of Triumph, which is a pretty decent combat trick. And a Martyr of Dusk. Got you. Um, other cards that I would probably pick, uh, Raptor, Companion, uh, you Dusk pick? Legion Zealots. Oh, yeah, definitely. Really good. Um, no. <laughs> That's a good card for the pirate deck, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I would first pick that. I'm looking I'm at not Fathom. a fan of the pirate deck. Fathom Fleet Border. Uh, I would definitely take Jade Bear. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, Luminous Bonds, most definitely. Uh, Colossal... Dreadmaw is more of a like later in the pack kind of thing. It's not bad though. It's a uh, six six for six. So. And Pride of Conquerors is really good too, but yeah. I don't think that's pack one. Uh definitely pack one, pick one, Legion, Lieutenant. Yep. All the way. 
says the guy that likes to first pick artifacts because it doesn't hose them into anything. Yeah, and this puts me into two colors. Exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching this episode of It Resolves. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, there's a lot of Rivals news to come, and we will stay on top of everything and keep bringing that to you every single week. Thank you, Parks, Oh, for being a part of this episode. It is my pleasure, Kevin. <laughs> He works at Chick-fil-A. It's true. I <laughs> well, well, before everyone goes, let me ask you something. Okay. Um, so. Everybody uh, else can leave. We're just talking now. <laughs> have you heard about the uh, Mexican magician? No. Okay. So there was this Mexican magician, okay? And he said, I'm going to disappear on the count of three. Mm. And he said, uno, dos, poof. Disappeared without a trace. That's so bad. That's so bad, Parks. <laughs> You're going to be a really good dad someday. Oh, thank you so much. I've been told that before. Oh, I can't imagine why. All right. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you for watching uh, what has been a very interesting episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Parks. And we'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Watching. Bye-bye.